Google me. And uh, in Studio SLT, we've got the Bug Club. Hello. 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 So I was talking to Dan before about, um, well, the tour that you did recently, which was including Mr. Anyway's Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, he was the first to admit that you'd not really thought it through that well. <laughs> No, not no. really. Yeah, it was no. a really stupid idea. Right, OK, so <laughs> let's go into it. So as, as a result of this uh, forming this band, you ended up supporting yourselves, which is already a tall order. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that Correct, was the plan. Yeah. OK, right, that's the start. So uh, at one gig, you actually did two shows in one night. Was that Halifax? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Greyston yeah. Unity, yeah. Right, and so then that meant you were doing four sets in one night. Yeah, four sets. It was like ten minutes between the support and the main one and then like another 10 minutes between the f- next support again <laughs> and then but you have to the van was dressing room as well so we had to like run out the other door and go get changed because <laughs> uh, you had costumes on which yeah. didn't make it any easier <laughs> yeah. right but not only that what does a human being normally have to do every now and then to exist <laughs> eat. Eat. eat eat yeah so i mean <laughs> you you seriously didn't think this through it was a marvelous gesture i mean and you know i hate to say this and i don't know how to break it to you live on the radio but everybody who went to see the bug club and saw mr anyways beforehand they did know it was you <laughs> well we had people upstairs like in some of the rooms there was like a basement thing and there was family arguing that they didn't believe it was us so they didn't even go down well they probably were doing that because they didn't think you were daft enough to do that that's probably that's probably where the uh, crux of the argument came from um but um so it, what were the costumes would you like to explain because i've never seen them uh well yeah they were, they were kind of like not the best costumes if i was to be honest but they were like uh, just like masks capes and a crown kind so of rubbish wise men was the look but oh, wise man. I thought yeah. I was going down the superhero route, but that was wasn't right. Yeah. Superhero wise man. <laughs> we right, the biggest okay. costume shop in the world as well, didn't we? And that was still the yeah, best we, we could find. Yeah, we were traipsing around this costume shop, and there were so many costumes, and the best we could come up with was just like a cape. Yeah, it was crown. pretty uh, last minute, wasn't it? It was on the way to the first gig. so it was <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, people still talk about Rick Waitman's cape. Well, I do anyway. So, I mean, you know, get a good gimmick and stick to it. That's what they say about show business. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and so, <laughs> all of the material that you wrote for Mr. Anyways, it was all fresh for that particular band, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was all just, uh, yeah, all just kind of a big new batch of stuff. We just thought it'd be fun to... Uh, you can get away with playing it if no one is expecting it to be you. You know, you can play a big set of new stuff that no one knows. And uh, we tried to make it kind of awkward, as awkward as per- like as possible as well. Like we kept all the music off before the first set, so it was like real dead in there. Right. And then we <laughs> Some of the promoters were like begging us to put music on. They were like, "It's so awkward yeah. out there, please." I'm, I'm loving this. But we had uh, we taped it all on a little. Uh, well, we bootlegged it ourselves, which might sneak out at some point. But we've got each whole gig as well. Like the the thing we released is off the desk, like the posh version of the the best takes. But we've got like the whole of each gig, and some of them are super awkward. It's like one guy in the room you can really hear like after the song. <laughs> right great <laughs> stuff i tell you it's a weird one this but <clears throat> i spoke to a guy <clears throat> who um, was davy bowie's sound man mm. and bowie stole him off another band in 1972 just as before the ziggy thing was getting going yeah. and um and mick ronson being a perfectionist and a genius wanted to hear the previous night's show every day in the van so this guy taped the show every night. Now, this is the beginning of the you know, Ziggy Stardust myth, you know? Yeah, yeah. Incredible. And so, like, you know, 18 great. months later, when they played the Hammersmith Odeon, he recorded that as well. Amazing. The the one problem was he used, <laughs> he used one cassette for the whole of the two tours. <laughs> so he went over it, and every single night... So if he had have just had the, you know, the wherewithal to go out and buy a new cassette every day, every single show of the Ziggy Stardust tours, both of them... And the Lad Insane tours uh, would have been captured on tape. So, wow. you know, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> oh, you've got to be careful. I taped for Out in the Streets one, I used a bit of Hull, a bit of cheering from Hull off the tape, but I taped over it. So on the on the master one, there's a big blank patch. He's oh. just like swearing. Yeah, we did it in the studio and I, I did he it wrong. He <laughs> Right, but okay. If you wonder what the cheering is on the solo, bit of Hull. That is. <laughs> right, fair enough. Okay, so um, looking at the dates, and it's the 27th today, so tomorrow you're playing Nottingham, Bodega, it's sold out. Mm-hmm. And then on on the 30th, Leeds, the Brunel Social Club, all Deo with Pale Blue Eyes and Buzzard, 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 Worm Boys, Pablo's Paintings and Sister Wives. Hello, Sister Wives. <laughs> and then you've got a bit of a gap, but not much, and you go through Cardiff, Walton on Trent, London, Birmingham, and then you're off to um, Brooklyn in America. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. That's mad. <laughs> Are you going all the way over to America just for one show?
Well, that's what it's got here. Pretty much, uh, yeah. Yeah, for now, it's, it's a visa thing, isn't it? It's a oh. boring visa thing. Oh. So we're allowed, but Shh. we're doing a radio thing over there as well. Right. And possibly a second show. Wow, um, okay. But then the plan is to go back later in the year. I don't know how much we're supposed to say, but we're I still just, yeah. It's, it's going so well for yeah. you. It's just mind blowing. <laughs> I am so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you, know, you very much. And in July, you play Oxford, Sheffield, Clitheroe, um, Crick Howell, the Green Man Festival, and then Birkenhead and Glasgow, and then you, you're off to Europe and yeah, and infinity and beyond. I would say. <laughs> and so you're going to do two tunes from now, and they're both very long, which is not what the Bug Club are really known for. Best is it? No, not really. Oh. There's a lot of little songs though, still, aren't they? We just call them one thing to be lazy, but... <laughs> right, OK. All right, then. So uh, what tunes are you doing, and in what order? Uh, it's called Picture This is the first one, and then Suck It is one off the Mr Anyways thing. That's the second one. Yeah, OK. So. Brilliant. All right, thank you, The Book Club, live in session.